The Bible says that the man should provide for his family so my wife cannot go to work. Talkless of being a successful leader. What can you say about this, please? It's quoting the Bible out of context mm -hmm. because when the Bible says a man should provide for his household, it's not just money. Mm -hmm. It's that protection. Mm -hmm. It's that time of prayer. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, it's, it's in everything. He has to provide. He has to provide, you know, um, you know, covering the spiritual covering and all that so it's not just talking about money so if he has taken money as the main you know thing that is quoted the bible out of context money is part of it mm. and then um, when when you allow your wife to become what god has destined her to be mm. then you will see that yourself will get the blessings of god on your life now, if this our sister is finding it difficult to submit to her husband, let's address the reason why. Why does she feel like she's subordinate? If it's the husband that is making her feel that, like that, then the husband does not understand what the Bible is saying about man love your wife as Christ loved the, the, the church. Because Christ loved the church enough to have died for her. Mm. Any man that loves his wife enough, that if they put the two of you together and they point a gun at the head of one and say someone should, you know, and the man say and the man says, take me, that means he's taking For the position. For a woman of the head. to be um, successful in their career and yet also be successful at home, mm. it takes a lot of sacrifice. It really takes a lot of sacrifice. Some women are the breadwinner, and um, when a woman is the breadwinner, there's a bit of an inferiority complex you have to deal with mm. you know in that situation so um, I've known um, some women who would get all the money and um, just give it to the man to to kind of be the one to direct the spending of it mm -hmm. right if they've uh, observed that this is creating an issue at all mm. it just depends on the nature of the man that you know women have got if they are simple men who are not quite bothered then you know you can you know you can even excel and become anything and then um, but in cases I would advise women as you are climbing up on top of your ladder make sure you are pushing the man ahead of you mm. because it's going to really it's going to <laughs> give you peace all the days of your life because if the man is far below you have some women who have um, gone up to become professors mm. and then um, they their husbands have just um, maybe yes, kind of God. done a first degree right mm. uh, or, or less mm. and then um, they feel they cannot fit into the circles mm -hmm. where their wife yes. would be mm -hmm. it will naturally create you know a, a kind of a, a, a complex mm -hmm. you see yeah. yeah so um i would always say wherever as you are climbing as a woman be pushing you know your husband be pushing him on top of the ladder so as they said the sky is never a limit mm -hmm. but there's a lot of room at the top so yourself your husband you a can always get in to the top. because you at work you are, you are boss or leader there uh, in the church you are leading a group of people i mean you have leadership quality inside of you is a leader mm -hmm. but nevertheless when you get home you put that leadership mm -hmm. crown aside and you submit to the one that god has placed uh, as your character exactly. actually is really important in whoever you are mm -hmm. in whatever god, god uh, places in your end mm -hmm. Uh, when God called me, in fact, there's this funny thing we joked about, you know, uh, when I was trying to ask him, oh, come and do this thing with me, let's do this ministry together, he just looked at me, he said, no. I kept pestering and he said, when God was calling you, I was right here with you. He didn't call me. We were sleeping on the same bed and he called you. He didn't call me to do this. Basically, uh, uh, it takes God to speak. The Bible says that the art of the prince mm. and princes, mm. king and prince are mm. in his hands mm. and flows like river and he turns his wherever he wills. Mm. As a daughter of Zion, I told the Lord, this man is my head. Mm. He has to support what I'm doing. Mm. So I need you to speak to him. Mm. God already taught his that. Mm. It's, it's not all I had to do was just to, yeah, you know, 
This is what God said. He didn't even question it. Mm. Of course, challenges are parts of uh, they're, they're, they're there for, for reasons. Mm. That what will take you to the next level. There are things that you have to deal with uh, that will build your character. Mm. All those challenges and everything, they will help you to be able to trust God and be a better person, a better leader in everything you do as well. So I can say there are different challenges that you face every day. As a woman as well, we've had people looking down on you mm. and thinking of women in ministry. You know, I've had somebody say, why, why would a man go and uh, uh, be under her or something like that? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, <laughs> when you are made a leader, you are a leader. Yeah. Regardless of your gender, mm -hmm. when you are called mm -hmm. to lead, mm -hmm. and people can evidently see that God is mm -hmm. innate. Mm -hmm. Male or female have no choice. If that is the call of God upon their lives, they have mm -hmm. to do it. If they don't do it, then they have to answer to the one that's called them to do it. So uh, challenges, they are there mm. every day. Mm. But I can tell you they have further built me up mm. and developed me. Mm. I have gotten to the state that I ignore, mm. totally. I ignore whatever anybody says. Mm. Because the one I have business with is the one that's called me. Mm. And that's the one that I'm going to be accountable to in the end. And I just try to just go along. The one that I need to support me is in support by the grace of God. Everyone else will join, mm. you know, if God calls him. Mm. He's called my husband the one that would have been the most difficult. Mm. He has supported it. Mm. Everyone else, they have no mm. choice mm. because God mm. is People at the say slavery of is gone, but I tell you, it is not because I am just like a slave in my house. Mm. I have to ask my husband for everything I need. Uh, Reverend Timitoke, can you please answer this person? Slavery, that, that could not have just started today. Mm. It must have been something mm. that has been there right from the beginning. Mm. Things like that don't just happen overnight. Mm. And she must have been in support of it right from the mm. beginning. Mm. Either because she might have been desperate to be in that relationship, mm. or maybe it's something that she has seen in her own family mm. setting. Mm. And with time, because of um, you know maybe contact with other women, mm. she has now come to realize it is slavery. Now. Mm. How does she get out of this mm. slavery? Mm. Prayer. Mm. Prayer and communication. Mm. Speaking what you want. The speaking man is controlling. Mm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> then in that case, prayer, of course, is what she needs. But, but I mean, we don't really understand what she terms. Mm. Because, because when I was, when I was, it. you know what I said earlier? I mean, what the woman said, mm. she said what it. she means. Because when we were in Nigeria, mm. you know, back before my husband got born again, I found some things to, to be too controlling mm. because African men have this nature. Yeah. Yeah. But even within that, you will see the good man that my husband was. Mm. But over the years, things have changed and improved much more than that. Mm. So okay. basically, I think culture has to do mm -hmm. with that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just um, yeah. mm, the yeah. man being, yeah. you know. A controlling man. Yeah. Well, m most African men are. Mm. Yeah, that's I, I have a very good example of this. I know somebody who ever since she's been working, always hands her paycheck to her husband. Mm. She always hands it over to him, and when she wants something, she asks him for it. Mm. Maybe that's her way of expressing love, mm. or maybe that is the way she feels he would, you know, honor her more. Mm. But it got to a time that, you know, it got out of hand. Mm. It got out of hand. Mm. Um, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I wanted to say, when we talk about most of these controlling men, mm. we're talking about culture and mainly African culture, which um, we have not grown out of, you know. Um, the Western world, because they imbibed the uh, Christian culture very early enough, um, most of those things have almost kind of gone completely, you know, um, away from this environment but because in African culture uh, men have seen their fathers in those days women actually are uh, children are born because they need to work on the farm a man has many wives because he needs more children to be able to, to go out to farm. help on the farm things have changed now but yes some men have not realized that their environment have changed, you know. They are not in the environment where they were when they were growing up and the woman never worked 
just had to take care of the children and the home. But even though these things have changed, we're in a more westernized environment, some men have still not been able to reason in to say they have to also change their modus operandi. They have to change, you know, to be able to adapt. Paul said, when I went to Rome, mm. I did like the like Romans, Romans. Mm. just so that at least I can mm. buy some chance win some. Mm. African men that have come to westernized environment, please begin to be like the western mm. so that at least you can win your home and you can win, you know, the yeah. people. Because around. you do the dishes, it just shows you love your wife and you love your when family. We're talking of leadership, mm. we're talking of confidence. A leader is got to be confident. Let us put everything we can, you know, to be able to develop confidence, especially in our male children, mm. because a leader has got to be confident. Confidence is acquired when you get information. Mm. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're not well informed, mm. then you don't seem you to be sure. sure. Mm. And that it's not, that is. So you know, true. not good for leadership mm, at all. Mm. So, you know, um, in, in terms of a woman, who it, you know, it is good that the man who is the head of that home should try and gain some confidence skill. And we can always help them. We can always help the men. Because you can decide to get a movie that is talking about, you know, confidence. confidence. You know, how to build up confidence. Mm. And then you will see that the man acquires that confidence and that would help in the whole. Mm. And anyone who is going to be a leader, get informed. Mm. Get informed. Read. Mm. Read. Get yourself, um, the, the Paul was writing, he said, study to show yourself approved. approved. Get yourself approved because that would then be able to help. Either as a man Some people or are as a woman. Good at reading books. Mm. But when you see people, you learn by watching and looking at others. Yeah. If she knows any woman, she can look for mentorship program. Yeah. You're timid, you can't talk. Yeah. But when you sit with people that can talk, yeah. then you begin to wonder, how is she doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said I can't do it, but she's doing yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So mentorship program, I believe, will help to you to see people that are doing well and learn from how they are doing well. Yeah. They must have made mistakes, yeah. and we learn from their mistakes. Yeah. Uh, role model, like I said, mentorship is not just, it's good to have a person that you're looking at, mm. but at the same time you read books. Mm. There are people that are great leaders, mm. great women of God all mm. over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, even some are not Christians, they're leaders, they're, you know, like the queen and people in leadership all over. Mm. You read how they did it or mm. how they're doing it. Mm. And by that you begin to apply those things. As a child of God, of course, it has to be in line with the will of God. Yeah. Not saying go and be learning what is not godly. Mm. Take those things that are godly from mm. them. Yeah. With you having a role model, it's important. I don't believe there's anything a woman can't do. Mm. I come from a family where we have four girls, no male children. At all? No. And my father, my late father, was an ophthalmologist. He was an eye surgeon. My mother is a pharmacist. So... Um, you know, they've raised us to believe that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. You can become anything mm -hmm. you want to be. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking through um, Pastor Sunday Adelaja's blog this morning, and I saw that the first female person to own a fleet of, you know, aircrafts is a woman, a black woman. Mm, praise God. So there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't become. There are, there are mechanics as women, mm -hmm. there are seamstresses as women, mm -hmm. there are doctors as women, there are pharmacists, there is any profession, you mm -hmm. name it, there are women in it. Mm -hmm. And you know when they say what a man can do, a woman can mm -hmm. do better. Mm -hmm. Women love perfection. Mm -hmm. A man can cook, a woman can cook, but a man goes in the kitchen, he makes the food, he messes the whole kitchen up. A woman will want to make sure everything is tidy. in order. I'm sorry. But <laughs> you know it happens. So women are perfectionists. We, we, we raise children, we nurture them, we teach them to be tidy, we teach them to clean their rooms. We, we, we are nation builders mm. because we raise the men to be whatever they're going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. So how can somebody say to you, Education you can It's the foremost thing you need. With, with um, you know, a good foundation. The Bible says that, you know, 
when the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous mm. do? You need a very good foundation. Mm. And when with a good foundation, you can build on that. Mm. Anywhere you go, you're confident. Anywhere you go, you can speak up. You can speak your mind. You can write very well. You can communicate effectively. So what advice do you offer women out there to empower them to be who God wants them to be? Um, Dr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dr. Esther. Um, we you know when, when we started off, I was talking about some seven qualities mm -hmm. that any leader at all, mm -hmm. whether male or female, should be able to have. And the first one we talked about was that exemplary character. Uh, a leader should be trustworthy. Um, if we are, if anyone, male or female, isn't trustworthy, then the followers are not going to be able to submit to their leadership. We also say that a leader, a leader should be very enthusiastic. Mm. Don't be a complainer. Some people are in their leadership role and every day they are always complaining. Oh, that thing is not good. Well, the people who are following, they're not going to see you because they're going to feel like you are incapacitated. You cannot function as a leader because anyone who is in leadership role, you should be able to look at the situations around you and be able to adjust and amend and still be able to carry out you know, your leadership role irrespective of what may be uh, missing. That is what leadership is about. Also, a leader should be confident. You have to because confidence comes from information. Mm. Get information. If you are not certain, if you're not sure, make sure you get yourself informed. A, a leader also needs to function in a purposeful manner. A leader has to be tolerant. We're talking about tolerance. There will be people who are following you and who will not still do what you want them to do. Mm. Tolerate it. Don't complain about everything. You heard about the 2080 rule. Make sure you focus on the 20 uh, most important thing that will be able to uh, uh, you know, uh, um, account for the rest of the 80. Also, a leader is, should be committed to excellence. Never take average, mm -hmm. you know. Never take average. Always push the people to excellence because excellence is very profitable. Yeah, not yeah. Thank you. You are original. You are you. Find the you. Mm -hmm. Once you find the you, maybe you are even called to support. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. not called to lead. Yeah. Not everybody is called to lead. Thank because you. if we are all leaders, then who's yeah. going to follow? Yeah. If you're called to support, then support yeah. with that yeah. no knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you're called to lead, find out. Once you know yourself, it's easy. Thank you. Women should always submit to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. Always, at every given point in time, always seek what the will of God is for your life. The will of God for your mentor might not be the will of God for you. Everybody is called to do different things. Just like the uh, doctor told us earlier, she listened to something, you know, that she found was in line with what she, you know, was agreeable to her, mm -hmm. you know. But she, sometimes you need to hear that word. Your ear gate needs to be open, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to be able to receive the word. That's mm -hmm. why they say faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. You need to hear the word mm -hmm. and, you know, hang on to it and, you know, the Holy Spirit will just lead people to know exactly what they are supposed to do. So more than relying on people, rely on the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, I just want to say to all women out there, either for those who are in leadership position already or those who are being groomed to be in leadership position, please lead by example. Have a real godly character. Uh, the Bible encourages us that if you are going to be a leader, you have to be a servant. Mm. So, imbibe that, you mm. know, serve. Mm. See yourself not as the boss. Because as we said in the studio, not all bosses are leaders. That's right. So, don't see yourself as a boss. See yourself as a leader, someone willing to serve in whatever capacity you have been put in. The truth can hurt you. Or the truth can change you. What will truth do to you?